Project 20 for 2022. I hope you're all well. I hope you all had a, a super weekend. Um, it's half term, isn't it? So I really, really wish the weather was better. <laughs> I know if I look up at my skylights, the rain is absolutely pouring down. So I'm sorry about that. I'm so Hi, Gemma. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that it's, that it's raining um, and it's half term. And everybody's been really looking forward to some time off. I know my grandchildren have, and actually both both girls, Adrienne and um, Abigail, love having the children home. So, except of course, a bit grotzy weather. I keep looking up there because that's my skylights. Hi, Kath. Hi, Janet. Hi, Jill. Lynn. Pauline. Wanda. Lovely for you to join me. I didn't have my normal minute or so picture today. I just thought I'd go just go live. Just go straight there. <laughs> oh dear. Lovely to see you all. Thank you very much for joining me. We've got a great project this evening. It's a project that our lovely Kath put together for us and I have the pleasure of demonstrating and it's Ivy. And this is my version that I made yesterday um, of Ivy. And if you're a Goldie, you'll have seen, well, if, even if you're not a Goldie, you'll have seen my table cover that I made for the pattern for this coming month, for June. And uh, I made it in the same fabric, so it, it ma matches. I couldn't get lovely sort of chintzy napkins, but I'm not, I'm not bothered about that. I've got, the, I've got the check, and they look quite fresh anyway. I think they were meant for the Jubilee. Mm. I had to go to the uh, to the garage on Saturday to get my dad a Saturday Times, um, and I thought, oh my goodness me, I need napkins. So as I walked in, there was a display um, of stuff, and it was only after a minute that I realised it was Jubilee stuff. Obviously, it is red, white, and blue. <clears throat> but um, needless to say, the napkins I thought was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> regardless um, so that's what we're making tonight and if you've seen the picture on the the front cover of the pattern you'll see the one that our Kath made let me just hold that up so you can see and Kath has done some trimmings going sort of diagonally across which I thought was rather nice um, <clears throat> so this is your opportunity to go crazy and uh, you could put your lace and ribbon anywhere I'm going to put mine straight across again but you can do diagonal like Kath has done, it's up to you. What I'm com particularly concerned about is the chocolate eclair because it does look like it's sitting in the sun. Now, I would worry that the chocolate would melt and it would be a bit messy to eat. Well, no, I wouldn't be bothered about the messy. I'll be honest. That's what the napkins are for, surely. <laughs> Just to mop me up. Oh, dear me. Oh, it's... Kathleen says it's Memorial Day um, from near Jersey. Now, Jersey, I'm assuming being the, the USA, um, Memorial Day. Well, happy Memorial Day if you're, if you're that side of the pond. Anyway, we're going to make ivy. And um, on, the, on the pattern, Kath has put ivy at your service because it's meant to go with, like, the tea service and... I think it's lovely. I really do. And <clears throat> actually, you have to excuse me if I get a bit froggy in my throat because I'm still <coughs> a bit coffee. I thought it would be wonderful because um, it's going to stop those napkins from blowing away. And one of the ladies today said that um, a little while back she made one incredibly similar to this, but in, in cardstock. Um, and obviously, you know, that, that was lovely and function, functional for, for a time. But of course, of course, we know cardstock doesn't last forever and it gets a bit battered. Whereas, you know, if this gets a bit of uh, chocolate eclair on it, you can bung it in the wash, can't you? And, uh, and just clean it. So it's, to make one in fabric is great. It's actually, uh, <coughs> excuse me, quite a nice gift to give to somebody. Um, if you're going to a barbecue and you want to take something, okay, hubby or whoever could take the wine, but you could make something um, handmade. 
and I think the hostess with the mostess would love it for it. So I think this would make a nice gift. But actually, first and foremost, it's a gift for you, isn't it? It's just a lovely little make. Um, and like all Making It Monday projects, they are a lovely little make. Now, I want to say hello to somebody, if, if this person has got the internet, because I know she was struggling. And <clears throat> today, I met up with a gold lady um, who comes from uh, Calgary in Canada called Helen. Um, she says she's still trying to, I've got her message in front of me, she's still trying to get, get the live. Sometimes it is tricky to find, even I sometimes struggle to find my own live. So well, nobody's need to worry about it, you'll get it eventually. <coughs> Excuse me, but, um, so I met Hel Helena actually, she's, she's known in the gold group as Helen, Helen Farmer, but she's Helena. And we met up today at the Cozy Cabin, which is, of course, my favourite little cook shop near me, um, near uh, Risby and Paris and Edmonds in Suffolk. And her husband was with her, Ray, and that was lovely to meet them. But also she brought her friends with her because she's staying with her friends in Suffolk, just up the road, really. Um, and that is Brenda and Alf. And it was lovely to meet them as well. And um, Ray did a little bit of filming of us chatting. I had the wrong side. It should have been this side, but I'm joking. Um, oh, there's me dad FaceTiming. Let's just cut him off. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> yes, yeah, so um, it was lovely to meet up with Helena today and we talked all things fabric and we were talking about the Making It Monday projects and she said that she thought they were lovely little projects as well, just to sit down and just have an hour or so to yourself sometimes. It's quite nice to do a bit of stitching. Um, so, so that was lovely to meet up with her and, um, and hopefully she'll, she'll get connected and she can come on and say hi. And if I see her say hi, I will say obviously hi back to Helena. <coughs> Excuse me. So welcome to everybody from Facebook and welcome to everybody from YouTube as well. Um, it's just so lovely to have your company. Oh, there we are, there's Helena. So um, she's there as Helen Farmer, so say hi. Um, and like I was just saying, Helen, that we met up today with your husband, Ray, and Brenda and Alf, and it was absolutely super. And we had a good old chat, didn't we, for about an hour, choosing fabrics as well, which of course, you know, we had to get. So um, <laughs> yes, and it was just lovely, lovely, lovely to meet up with you all the way from Calgary. So we're going to make ivy, I've waffled enough. We're going to make ivy and um, it's, it's a lovely little make. Like I said, it's for storing your napkins, um, especially when the, the wind is blowing and your paper napkins are gonna go all over the place. Um, this is a good one to store them. And I think probably a little bit more, <coughs> excuse me, practical than, than cardstock. But um, it's, sorry, my dad keeps ringing me. Um, there we go. Let's just cut him off again. He never remember. He's, he, you know, he's 93. Bless him. He never remembers that Monday night is is making it Monday night. He doesn't quite understand it all. I don't think. <laughs> He'll keep ringing me until he gives up. Um, and of course, last week we made Aunt Sally. And Aunt Sally goes with the sort of projects as well because we're kind of building up a, a tea party table for the summer. Let's hope the sun starts shining shortly. And um, Aunt Sally was the start. And then, of course, we've got Ivy, which is the new pattern today. And then, of course, as the time goes on in June, we'll bring, be bringing you more sort of tea party type things. OK, so look out for that. It's kind of like a little mini series, really. And for the next um, two Mondays, um, our Kath will be doing the Facebook Lives for us um, on Facebook only. So do catch up with Kath. Um, she loves to have your company. And you're very generous, I have to say, with your time with her um, and, and me. And uh, we do, both of us, really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Yes, uh, Maggie says at 93 it's great to know how to FaceTime. Well, yes, he's had a, he's had a lot of tuition. <laughs> I think, you know, when you've called somebody and it says missed call and it comes up on your contacts, um, he, he just literally presses that, I think. So then that's absolutely fine. And I'd much rather FaceTime him 
than talk to him on the phone because then you can you can see his face and see hmm, see if he's in pain or if he's happy you can just tell can't you by their demeanor I, I do love that I do that with nearly everybody <laughs> just just I don't know you get a better feel for how somebody feels right We've, I've got everything cut out. I've got everything stabilized as well. It says in the pattern what you need to do. Um, the only thing I haven't done is cut out the shape because you do get a pattern piece and we need to cut that shape. So I thought I'd do that with you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm so sorry if I s sort of, you know, keep coughing and spluttering. It's just how it is. Um, so yeah, so I've got all my pieces. So, so I think the first thing we're going to do is to actually cut out the shape. So we've at least got the right starting point for all of this. So we'll go, um, we'll go on the overhead so you can see what that looks like. So I've got my square of fabric. Isn't that glorious? Now, again, this is part of the Moda um, Grace collection, which is not new, um, guys. So um, all of the fabrics that I've used over the last couple of weeks are the Moda Grace. So we're going to cut this one and this one um, with the shape, with the template, okay? And um, I would suggest that you do this one at a time, that you don't layer them up and then cut, because um, if you layer up fabrics or anything like this, um, the inside one will shift. Okay, the inside one will shift. So it's better to do one at a time. Look, that just hasn't caught. And I put that under my steam press as well, but there we are. I'll do it that way. <laughs> so I'm just going to fold that in half. Um, doesn't matter if I crease it. I've got one of these tiny little um, rotary, it's, it is, it is a rotary cutter, but it doesn't really rotary cut at all. I have to sort of push it along a little bit. Um, and it's the, Oh gosh, am I going to say 15? Is it the 15 mil or is it the... I can't measure it, I haven't got my metric with me. Um, anyway, it's a really, really small cutter, okay? Um, I think this is a clover one. And it's very, very good for, for small, you know, little curves, okay, little curves. So um, bear that in mind if you ever want to think about um, getting a smaller rotary cutter. Not any good at all for anything more than something like this, okay? It's very, it's kind of specialized in a way, but, you know, if we've got it, might as well use it. So um, I'm putting my template over the top. This, this is all I'm interested in, this top bit here, okay? And all I'm going to do, now you, what you could do, of course, is draw that, pin it, draw it, and, and just cut with your scissors. You don't have to use a, one of these at all. And be very, very careful because obviously it's still just as sharp as a regular big one. Um, so just beware of your fingers. And you're just going to push that along. And it, I mean, it does go round, but it's not, you know, it's not super slick like some of the big ones. But it cuts beautifully, you can see. Cuts, cuts really well, nice and sharp. I, I always think, gosh, it's such a shame. It's lovely and stabilised. I'm going to throw it away, but I'm, I might just keep that little bit. <laughs> I don't know why. It's such pretty fabric. I don't want to um, throw it away. Now, you're doing this on the fold, guys. <clears throat> you're doing this on the fold. Place on fold. So, fold. <laughs> and, like I said, I'm interested only on this little bit here. I'm not interested in anything else. Just this little bit here. So again, mind your fingers if you're using a rotary cutter. And actually, you'll find a 28 millimeter will cut this just as well. Now I'm pushing my fabric a little bit, which is not ideal, but there we go. I can hear it squeaking. <clears throat> Close the blade off. Let's keep safe. A nice little bit there. And that is my two pieces cut. So we've got what looks like a vest top. <laughs> Uh, back and front, if you like, or lining and outer fabric. Um, now, the first thing we're going to do is to actually apply our lace that we're going to put on the front. So I've got some gorgeous lace here. Um, here we go. And I'm just going to use some quilters tape. Now, what I suggest you do is get your square 
on a line. So can you can you see that this top part here is, is following this line? So it's dead straight, which means that wherever you put your tape, you're going to get it straight. OK, and it's an old trick that um, we used to do or I used to do in paper crafting. Um, don't pull it too tight because it'll ruckle up your fabric and, uh, and just snip. <coughs> And if you, you don't have to use quilter's tape, it's quite, it's not hugely expensive, but on the other hand, you know, it's still something that you would have to purchase. In fact, I'm going to do a second line just a little bit underneath it. So I could have kept it there so I could eyeball it, but I think I can do okay. I think I've done this a few times, I'll be okay. There we go. So you could use a little bit of your glue. So if we're, we're looking at glues, you could use your base stick glue, your Roxanne temporary basting glue. Excellent stuff. Just a few little drops. Or you could use the Fast and Tacky glue by Hemline. That's another good one. Just again, just a few little dots um, and, and just glue it or pin it. But um, I find this quite accurate. So let's just take that um, off as well. Let's get rid of that and I'm just going to pop that down. Now um, I'm not putting this right over the entire piece of uh, quarters tape. I'm actually putting it a little way away. I don't know if we can if I can flash it so you could see the glue and you see so you can see a little bit of the glue on the second edge there which is great. So again, I'm going to do a one underneath. Oops, let's get it the right way around. So it's definitely a right and a wrong side to this piece of lace. And uh, we'll just line it up like that and take it across. Just got to make sure that it is straight. There we go. <clears throat> and I can probably see better on the overhead, but it's quite light, isn't it? And then I've got some velvet, which is just lovely. Uh, I think we're going to move that up just... No, I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I was going to move it up, but I don't think I'll bother. So that this velvet lace is, um, ribbon is going straight through the centre, and there's a little bit of uh, quilter's tape underneath that just to grab it so I don't have to worry about it when it goes under the machine. So that's as simple as that. So... That's all you need to do, something along those lines. Or you could do it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, across like this. Or you could, you could quilt this if you wanted to. There's lots of, there's lots of lovely things you could do. Um, but I think that's simple enough. So we're just going to stitch that on. It is gorgeous lace. I quite agree. I quite agree. So let's just get the side camera up. <clears throat> now my... Um, my um, bobbin might run out, uh, so just to warn you, <laughs> right, let's see what stitch length I'm on, make it a little bit bigger, that's it. So I'm just going to stitch that on, <clears throat> now that should catch the edge of the velvet ribbon and it should catch the lace, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but if you're not sure that it's caught your lace, there's no reason why you can't do another line of stitching. Um, it, you're not going to see it, basically, so I shouldn't worry. So, for instance, if we just turn this around <clears throat> and then just come up the lace. I don't know if you can see the difference of where I am, but... It just means that I'm catching that down. I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's it's fine as it is. But if you do put this in the wash, you know, just a, a little hand wash or something, you don't want, because uh, this is uh, wash away um, quilters tape, <laughs> you don't want your lace to come off. So we might as well stitch it. And to be honest, because it's lace, you're not going to see it, the stitching, and um, it secures it. So. There we are. You can see what that looks like now. Lovely and neat. Very, very pretty. And just adds that little bit of difference, doesn't it? Really, really beautiful. 
It is pretty fabric, Leanne. It's a Leanna. It's um, Moda Grace. Moda Grace. It's not a, a new one. Um, so it's limited wherever you can find it. That's fine. But um, yeah, it's uh, not that readily available at the moment, as far as I'm aware. I know there's a, there's a, a few stockists of it, but you'll have to Google it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, so <clears throat> the next thing we need to do, I'll just check my pattern just to make sure I'm following Kath's advice. I'm pretty sure we start putting the, excuse me, start putting the, the gusset on. Yes, we do. I'm just making sure. Now then, um, I've just cut a length. It, oh, that's come undone as well. I'm not very good at my pressing today. Um, and it says in the pattern how much. I think it's 25 inches. But, it, but even so, that, that is um, what, what Katha suggests is, is that a little bit too long. In other words, she's giving you some leeway. So if you start off... Let's start off with that one, for instance. If, if you want to start off like that, so right sides together, and you want to start like that, then so be it. Okay, so be it. Um, I tend to start in the middle. Uh, that's just my way. And when Kath does hers, she does it in three separate sides. I start in the middle, so I get everything centrally lined up. Um, and then I go to the corner and stop and then I regroup and then I come up to the top and there's always spare here spare gusset up here same on this side so I'd kind of do it in lots of little stages the other thing you might want to do is to mark your corners now um, I think in, in actual fact there's a little point marking on your right side of your fabric what you do want to mark really is your gusset so if we were to fold this in half and give it a little squidge because it's important that you get this lined up when you start stitching so i'm literally going to draw a line across I've got a rubbish pen but you can just about see that which means that when I lay it here and I put the other side to it it's going to match up you'll see as we go along and then as I come up to here I will I will do a little quarter inch mark um, just to make sure that I am where I want to be because what you're going to do is um, and this is depending on how you're going to stitch if you want to start stitching from here you stitch from there I'm going to start stitching here I'll come along here, or actually I might go the other way, um, I'll mark my quarter inch from the corner, I'm going to pop my needle in, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to turn. Now you can, if you want, snip into your straight edge just to make it easier. Um, there's a picture in the pattern of how Kath does it, and she does it like, it's almost like you're going to do a mitre, so she does it so um, she sort of creases it like that to make sure that it's going to sit properly when she turns the corner. But I want you to to do it what's what you're used to um, I'm going to do it my way um, and then you can either copy that or you can do it the way you like to do it okay so I've marked the center so I know that's the center <coughs> I'm going to fold this in half and give it a little crease so there's my crease there let's give it a little mark again red pen on pink is not though that that bright but there we are so there's my mark there so I'm going to put right sides together and we can put a pin in that if you want very rarely use pins and things like that on um, such a small thing um, I will just sew this as is I'm putting the head of my pin facing out so when I'm stitching it I can just pull that out and what you can do is as you pull this down you're going to stitch to the corner there, like I say, quarter of an inch away. Now I tend to fold this back, crease it, come back, and I can see exactly where my quarter inch is. Okay, and I'm going to do a little dot. You can see that, so I know that's where I'm going to stop. Um, likewise, when you come up here, you might want to stop a little bit away from the top. Again, you can mark it. It just, it's everything is about making it easy for yourself. Um, so that's where we're going to start. I hope that makes um, a little bit of sense to you. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, we've all got different ways of doing things and there's no right or wrong. So quarter inch seam allowance, you might want to pop your needle in. Um, 
manually if you like so you know you've got it exactly on the quarter inch mark and you're where you want to be so we'll just come along here and I'm going to stop on that red mark that I did that's it now what you can do so you can see up this is the the, the edge the new edge that I'm going to come round now what you could do is clip into this straight piece here just to make it easy easier to go around the corner but or you could just bring those together push your fabric across don't worry because it'll just ruckle a little bit I shouldn't worry about that one jot so you've brought it round, look, we've got it's now parallel with that straight side, and then you can just keep on stitching. So it's not difficult. What you, what you want to try and do is get it so both sides are the same. <clears throat> so as we come up here, I'm just going to stop just a little bit away from the top of that. One little back stitch just to secure it. And that's our first little bit attached. So if I bring it round, let me, oops, <laughs> let me show you. Hold on, let me get my, my ends out of the way. There we are, so you can see what that looks like, okay? See what that looks like, like that. And like I said, you can snip into that corner if you want to, just to make it lay flat, but it's perfectly fine as it is. So then what we're going to do is the other side. And um, this is where you've got to decide how you're going to do this. Now I normally like to stitch with the gusset on top and whatever it, the product project is underneath but that may not be suitable for you. You might want to do it the other way around. But what I am going to do is I'm going to mark my dot. So I know that's my quarter inch mark and I'm actually going to pin that so I know that I've got my fabric laying nice and straight along that bottom bit that's where we started there I'm going to bring that around bring it up here and I'm just going to put one pin in there just for a moment to secure that okay and I should be right so you can see what that looks like and in the picture you'll see Kath's um, picture of how she does that but it's that's the the marker that you're aiming for you don't want to move your needle particularly but you could take your you could take your needle out and and regroup if you like and start again so I'm going to start from up the top here this time because I do like to have my gusset on the top because I like to be able to manipulate the corner so I'm just going to pop that under the machine and do that one I promise you do, we'll do the rest a little bit more quickly, but it's good to it's good to um, just go through it. Let's just do a little back stitch there because I missed that completely. <clears throat> there we are. So I can take my pin out now because I don't I didn't need it. I just needed it to sort of hold my layers together temporarily. I'm going to take this pin out here as well because really I like all my fabric to be loose. You can see it's nice and loose and that's how I like it. So it gives me a bit of manoeuvrability. Good word. Do you know, I think I've moved my dot. So ooh, let's hope it fits. I don't think it will, guys. I might have to undo it or <laughs> we'll put a pleat in it. <laughs> so just coming up to that quarter inch and then all I'm going to do is swivel that around. I'm keeping my needle in. I'm pushing my fabric out of the way. <clears throat> just getting that um, sitting straight. Not the most brilliant corner because I think I had too much fabric there. And then I'm good. I've just gone over my stitches where I started. So that's my, my second corner installed. Can you see how that looks like that? I think that's absolutely gorgeous. So that's one side done. So we just need to repeat that for the other side. So if we go on the overhead again, and now this part is actually quite important. I'm not going to move the machine because it's just in the right place. Remember we did our line there and that's our center. Well, if we get our second piece, we're just going to, let's do it that way. We're just going to mark that center and you can either pinch it like I've just done or you can, uh, and or you can do a little mark. And we're going to make sure that those two sit together because we want that to be, um, oh, we want, I want this to be right. I want this gusset to fit the same as the other side. So again, 
I'm going to stitch from the gusset side. So let's just line that up again. There we go. And this time we've got a little bit more fabric to, to mess about with, if you like, to, to sort of um, move about, but it should still be fine. You, sh you, just, you mustn't worry about having all this extra bulk. Just do exactly what you did before. The main thing here now is to make sure that the, when you stitch the gusset, if I open this up, I want you to have a look, is that when you stitch that gusset, I want you to finish there. So if I move that slightly, I want you to finish there because it would be very easy to stretch one or two of these, either this bit or that bit, and this gusset won't sit as nice and square as that. I mean, there's no guarantees, but we'll do our best. So, and you can always trim it. It's not, uh, it's not life threatening. It's not life threatening if, you, if you're a quarter of an inch out, but it's good to pin it just a little bit here now or you could use clips so they're less ferocious just to make sure that that gusset is going to sit where it should do okay um, so we're going to start from the center again because that's how I like to do it take my pin out and a little back stitch just to make sure that's all secure and then we're just going to run up to that corner and like I said if you want to and I'll wait till I get nearer I'm going to mark that quarter inch where's my pen here we go just so when I get to it I know that's where I'm going to pivot <coughs> so it's it's about there so I'm going to pop a little oh sorry you can't see I do beg your pardon there we go so I've done a little a little mark on my my gusset piece and that's my quarter inch pivot point so I'm just going to come down to there if I can get it straight there we go <coughs> again just pop my needle in that's my pivot point if you like everything gets moved I'm going to move that fabric around <coughs> oh if I can get hold of it there we go as I say, don't worry about all the, all the bulk and extra bits and bobs, it's fine. And then you're coming up that side. And just make sure <coughs> that your, your gusset fits your square, you know, your backing piece, as best as you can. And then we'll take that last pin out. Little back stitch. And that's that one side done so I've gone all the way from that corner from the middle oh dear this is not very good is it from the middle there round to here and up to the end of the, the gusset there and you'll be able to see that if I open that up with any luck that's not bad at all well you can snip that bit off Obviously, like I said, mine is a little bit longer than Kath said, only because that was the length of that piece of fabric I happened to be using. So um, again, we're just going to start with the, um, the end of the gusset. So if we look at it here, again, what I want to do is line this up. OK, so you can see that's all lined up. And I'm going to pop a pin in like that and then I'm going to start there I'm going to come down to this corner I'm going to mark my quarter inch pivot and turn okay and what I can do is if I want I can take my gusset along now to that corner I've already got a little mark there and um, that will be my my pivot point just there and that will that will fit beautifully look can you see? So again, we'll start on that end of the gusset <coughs> at the top, if you like. And that way I know that everything is lining up. Let's do a little back stitch. <coughs> and just come down, we'll take that pin out. We don't need that. Of 
quarter inch seam allowance again as best you can. You could always draw a line because you're stabilizing this with H250 or something like that. I wouldn't, well, you could use wadding. You could, no, you could. I was gonna say you, you don't need to, but you absolutely could. Um, uh, but if you use the H250, you can draw on it. So I've just put my needle in. So I'm just literally going to pivot the whole thing around. Just get all the bulk out of the way and then literally start stitching again. There we go. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. <laughs> so there is my, my, my outside box done. Oh, not very good, is it? I, what I'll do is I'll show you on the overhead. I'm always too near on the side camera. I don't want to move my machine. So there we are. So our gusset is sitting really lovely. Everything is equal up the top, which is pleasing, pleasing to the eye. So we'll just snip this away now because we don't need any of this. Make it nice and super neat. And then all we're going to do is the same again with the lining. OK, so I'll be a little bit quicker this time. And if you want to, you could turn this through. Um, I think it's a good idea at this stage to give it a press, although you're going to turn it through again. But if you press it now, it'll, it will give it memory, okay? And uh, when you come to press it at, right at the end, um, it'll remember that's where it needs to fold. But just for time, we'll just, we'll just do it like this. So just poke those corners out as best you can. And what I would do when you iron is to fold it like that and to iron it so it's, it's flat, okay? Um, and then you're, you've given it that crease to remember. Okay, so we're going to do the other side. So again, just bringing in all your pieces. Again, my um, gusset is far too long for my project only because that happened to be the width of the fabric and that's what I used. So in fact, I think it's probably right across the width of the fabric, literally, from selvage to selvage, but you know, nothing's wasted. I'll use it on some applique, that sort of thing. So we'll just line this up again and we'll pin it. And I've pinned it on the crease. I don't know if you saw me just do that. And then we'll just pop that gusset on. Oh my gosh, I mean, there's so much gusset here. It's ridiculous. In fact, I ought to, I ought to cut some of this away. <laughs> Let's just cut some of it away. Oh dear. There we are. So I'm going to run that under the machine now. So we'll start again from the center. <clears throat> Let's just move you to the side. Take the pin out. <clears throat> well, I hope you've all had a good weekend. Did you do anything nice? Did you go anywhere anywhere nice? Um, it's half term, as I said before, earlier, right at the beginning. So a quarter of an inch just before that corner. Pop your needle down and pivot. Now on this lining, we need to leave a turning gap. So I'm going to do that now, guys. So I'm just going to come up an inch or two, let's say two inches. I'm going to cut my threads. I always do this when I remember, just in case um, I forget. So a little back stitch, that'll do. And then just come up that side there. Yeah, and we just, we just need some really nice weather, don't we? Because it's all been a bit grotty. So there's one half done, so you can see what that looks like. So now we're just going to track it back on the um, other side so we get that lined up nicely. So by tracking it back, I mean I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put a little quarter inch mark there. I'm just going to pop a pin in. Let's do it like that. And then I'm just going to move that around and come up the side there. Again, I could put a pin in there just to hold that. And then I'm gonna start stitching right at the end there. And you can see, we, I've got extra. You, you won't have quite as much as me. <laughs> but you know what? It really doesn't matter. 
there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of other things we can worry about. And it isn't a little bit of leftover gusset. <laughs> little back stitch. And come down the other side. Now, if you've got a quarter inch foot, it's really good to use it. Um, get used to it. They're all a little bit different. Um, some have like sort of um, a guide, a blade, if you like, on the side of the um, foot. That's quite useful. <clears throat> so again, we're just coming, just pivot and turn. Get all my bits and bobs out of the way. Foot down. And away we go. Now, like I said, if you want to, to make it a lot, lot easier, you can cut into your gusset, just your gusset. You only ever cut the, where the, bit, the straight is, if you like. You don't cut anything that has an angle, like your, the, the outside base. You only ever cut your gusset, and that helps it go around that corner. It just helps it ease it round. But if you do snip into it, don't go quite as far as quarter inch. And I would always do a little back stitch just before you pivot and just after you pivot, just to make that, that sure that's a nice strong corner. So that's one half stitch. So now we just need to do the other half. So we're just going to do the same as what we did before. So I'll just find the centre. Now it just so happens I've caught, can you see I've just caught the salvage on that? So we're going to I'll pop that in the, the bottom of the, the, um, the ivy, the pouch, what would you call it? Tray? Um, because obviously we're not going to see that. But of course this is, this could be reversible, don't forget. Um, as long as you stitch your turning gap really nice and neatly, there's no reason why. This couldn't be reversible. So again, just line this up so it sits. Let's just move that a little bit. So you know that's where you're aiming for. Let's just smooth that out. And you want all of that to sit parallel, if you like. So that's where we want to finish. And likewise, on this side, if I flip that out, like that, I know that I want that top edge to finish there, or as best as. I find if you don't do this, you could you could be sometimes as much as a half an inch out. So if you have your mind set on that's where you're stopping, you'll fit all the rest of this in. It'll all work in. If you don't have that as a full stop, if you like, that you could easily stretch some of that. Um, I mean, this is not bias, but you can st obviously still stretch the fabric. It's still got a bit of give in it. Okay, so this is our second side. So we don't need to worry about turning gaps. We can just pop it under the machine and go for it. And I'd like to think that you will um, give it a go. Our presser foot's international. Now, when you say international, what you mean is different types of machines. Because most, you know, you get a Benina in any country, you get a Janome in any country. So it's more, are they universal rather than international? And the answer to that is yes. The, the Benina has its own set of feet. The, well, it would, wouldn't it? Um, likewise, the Juki can be a bit like that as well. But generally speaking, if you've got a foot where you've got a button here to, for it to drop off um, and it sits on, you've got a grab bar, then all feet that are like that will fit your machine, if that's what your machine is like. Um, yeah, so, but, 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 <laughs> I always say, <clears throat> It's better to go to your the manufacturer of your machine and get that make because it's then fit for purpose and you know it's going to work. You're going to it's going to cost you more money probably, um, but I really do. Uh, I don't advocate getting a a, a, more, a cheaper let's say um, press a foot for your machine I would always say go to your manufacturer because you can guarantee that it's going to fit okay so I've done one side again you can't see it very well but trust me 
Um, and then we're just going to come down the other side. Now I've done my turning gap, so I know I'm safe. Don't have, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have to remember. Oh, my reverse isn't working, fine. Oh, it is now. Oh my goodness, look. <laughs> it's got a mind of its own. Perhaps I should stop it. Oh, stop. <laughs> How odd, wait, stop. <laughs> I've never had that happen to me before. <laughs> My button must have got stuck somehow. How funny. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> yes, so there we are. I, that's all I would have to say about that. Um, oh, it's having a, having a bit of a hissy fit. So, <laughs> oh, I've done it the wrong way around. Look, I'm st stitching on the, the outer piece and not the gusset. So... Oh, I don't really like it when I'm doing that. So let's just take that off. And let's turn that around and start from there. Gosh! How odd. So let's just go down here. Again, we're going up to the corner. <laughs> I can't go over that. <laughs> oh, needle down, pivot. I've already stitched some of it, haven't I? So we should be fine. And then down there. There we go. Let's just hope the machine stops for me. <laughs> Spooky. Yeah, it's upset because you're talking about other machines and feet, Jackie. You're quite right. It's got a little bit um, bit temperamental with me, hasn't it? Yeah, I don't blame it either. <laughs> so <laughs> there's my little, my little tray, if you like. Oh, which reminds me. I don't know if any of you saw... Oh, now, would it be Flog It? One of those antique programs. And they, he had for sale, or he's going to put into auction, a crumb catcher. And it rem this reminded me of that because it was, it was kind of like, it's like silver. And it was, so you, let's just show you with this one that we've made. It was a similar sort of thing, except that you'd have a little brush and you would sweep the crumbs off your table with a little brush into the tray. And I thought, what a, what a good idea. And then I thought, oh, Ivy could be that as well. <laughs> oh dear, right. So there's um, the lining done. So all we're going to do is right sides together. So put one inside the other. So you'll, ha you'll have had to turn one. So I, t I turned my outer one didn't I right, uh, right side round inside out other way round and the main thing here is firstly get it so it's sitting right inside so give it a push into the corners make sure it's all sitting and just makes it easier for you and then it will line up nicely um, and then so you've got right sides together look okay and then what you really need to do is to um, I would say nest these seams. That's sort of like the quilter's sort of Bible, isn't it? To nest the seams. But it does help reduce the bulk. So you might want to nest your seams here and put a clip on. Again, nest the seams. I shouldn't worry about what direction. I, I wouldn't start losing sleep about that. Just try and get your seams to sit together. And then that's the very least anybody could expect of you. Um, likewise on this side. So if we went out with that one, we'll do the same with this. I, I, I don't worry about it if it's um, too much for you to think about. It just uh, reduces the bulk on some of the seams. That's all. That's all. Nothing else. Um, and then just put a clip on it so it holds it. Now, by doing that, the whole rest of it is sitting in place. But if you look at Kath's pattern, she's pinned that all the way around to keep it stable. OK, so maybe let's put um, two or three pins in. Um, well, let's do as Kath tells us to do. Um, sometimes it's you can do a shortcut. Other times it's like, you know, perhaps it's better we do it this way. Um, if you've got a free arm on your machine, then use that because that'll sit nicely in, on a free arm. Or you can stitch on the inside, which is what I'll do. Um, that's, that's quite an easy thing to do as well. I won't bother taking my, my little table off. I'll just leave it as it is. But it's quite, it's a lot easier to stitch on the inside. So we'll start on one of the corners. So we've got right sides together. 
<coughs> and do a little back stitch. I'm a bit worried about doing a back stitch now. Oh yeah, that'll do. <laughs> but, ooh, is it going to go crazy? Um, I'm going to obviously take my clips out straight away. And we're just going all the way around, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, just follow yourself around. Lovely, easy stitching. Stitch length of 2.4, 2.5 is absolutely fine. Same throughout the project. Um, that stitch length is pretty generic. Um, so stick with that. And then we're coming around to the other corner. And now we come into the curve. Now, with the curve, you can take your stitch length down now to two, because um, stitching a curve with a smaller stitch is much, much better for a curve, okay? Much, much better. And if you stitch on the inside like this, it's much, much easier. If you've got the free arm, again, very, very useful. Don't ever be afraid of trying things out, like using the free arm. Um, it, it's there to, to help you, okay? It's there to help you. Yep. So, just take the pins out as we go. Um, and just enjoy that little bit of stitching without any complication. Come up to your corner. Try and keep your raw edges sitting together. And then we'll do a little back stitch. Oh yes, it's fine. I don't know why it went crazy before. <laughs> but there we are. If we have a look at it as best we can on the side camera, you can see I've stitched all the way around without stopping. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just snip into these curves here. You can use your pinking shears if you want to. That makes a, a really nice curve, so you can do that. But I'll just um, snip into it. I've got my lovely little embroidery scissors. So I'm going to snip my corners off. Fairly near to the stitching, but not obviously too too near. And then, <clears throat> I don't know if those are strong enough. I'll, I'll use these ones. These are, these are very strong. So we're just going to snip into that. And if you've reduced your stitch length, you'll find that um, you'll get a lovely curve. You really will. You do. Uh, can I suggest you just try that out? Do a curve on a tr practice piece of fabric, uh, two pieces like this, um, and do it at a longer stitch length. Let's say, let's say four, for argument's sake. Turn it through. Try and get yourself a nice curve, and then do it again using a, t a t length of two, and see how you get on. So look, you, I've snipped all the way around. And if you want to trim some of that back, you do that. Um, so, all we're going to do now is to pull it through. Now, top tip, yes, I'm going to stitch my turning gap. I did it on my other one, I promise. I'll show you if you want, if you want proof, if you want evidence, I'll show you. But do not stitch your turning gap until you've got all your points pointed, okay? It just makes a huge difference. Love the sound of snippy scissors, Leslie. Yes, these, these are good scissors okay they're they're crafters companion paper scissors um and they are first rate i think i'm got i'm sure they must be japanese i, I don't know but yeah all of their purple head um scissors like this any of those scissors that they've got are really good yeah really good indeed so let's just pull this through there we go made a made a bit of a meal of it so um, while your turning gap is still open, what I want you to do is to get your pokey tool and just push those corners out, okay? It's not so easy when it's, um, when the turning gap is closed, okay? So let's just, I'm sorry, I'm getting myself in a muddle here. Here we go, here's the other ones. And so the two, corners either side of the curves and then just get your tool and pop it inside just on your outer fabric is fine I wouldn't worry too much about your lining it's just going to sit where it's going to sit and it, and anyway it's going to be inside out so let's now I've poked my corners out here and here can you see I'm now going to stitch my turning gap so just get hold of the seams either side give it a pull 
and that should bring your seams together. Okay, it depends on how uh, tough you've been pulling it through. Let's just give that a squidge. Pull it together and then just top stitch it along, along there. Okay, so I'll do that off camera because it's only a little bit of stitching. <coughs> okay, lovely. So there's our turning gap closed. Give it a little snip, give it a little neaten up. And like I say, if you want to make this reversible, which of course you can, um, I would just bear in mind the, um, the turning gap. And you might want to hand stitch it with a ladder stitch. Okay, so we're gonna top stitch this now. Um, but you really now want to make this super duper neat. And I really strongly suggest you get your iron on this now. Um, I'm just going to finger press it. I'm going to hot finger press it. It's just so I can go around the top. Just roll those seams out. Um, excuse me, because I'm licking my fingers, but I'm, I'm, this is only for me. Um, it just makes a difference. Yeah, I, what we need is one of those post office stamp things. Do you remember? We used to have a little wet dauby thing. That's what we need as a stitcher sometimes. And then if your corners aren't brilliant, I mean, that's not too bad. Let's do it so you can see, that's not too bad. But what you can do is um, get a sharp implement, a pin will do actually, and just pull that corner out a little bit more just to make it a bit sharper, okay? So, well, I'm going to top stitch this. I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm actually going to turn this around inside out and I'm going to stitch from the inside, but because it's turned inside out, it'll actually be on the right side of my fabric. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever top stitch on the lining. I'm not bothered about necessarily how neat the lining is. I want the outside to be super neat. So it's all going to get pushed through. There we go. And I'm going to top stitch now on the inside. If you've got a free arm, you're not going to do that, okay, because you've got the facility. I have, but I just um, want to just keep my machine intact for the moment. So let's just turn to the side camera then and start at a place uh, that, you know, that you're not going to sort of necessarily see your start and stop points. And for a top stitch, I would go up to three, just to make it a feature. And just make sure that it's, um, that you, your seams are rolled out and they're nice and flat. So we'll just come round, take your time, no rush. If anybody's waiting for their tea, just tell them it's going to be another five minutes. <laughs> and then just make your way around. And we're doing the curve, you see, so we're just taking our time. <clears throat> just make sure, as I said, that the, the seams are rolled so you, that you, you're not really seeing much of your lining. Just take your time. Come up to that other point and then this is the nice little straight edge bit. That's it. Again, make sure those seams are rolled. If you've done a good job of pressing, this is a doddle because it'll all be where it should be. But if you finger press like me, just keep your eye on it. Make sure that those seams are sitting where you want them to be. And then we come back to the beginning. Now I'm not going to do a back stitch. I'm just going to cut my threads. Okay. <clears throat> so, because I, my, I don't know about your machine. I'm just let me go back onto the, um, the overhead. Because on my machine, it makes a right pickle sometimes of the threads because it cuts them and then it sucks them up and twists them around. So yeah, my, some machines don't do that. Mine does. <laughs> 
Oh dear. There we are. So that's lovely and neat now. So now I can turn that through again and I'm going to give it a little press. Now I won't bore you with pressing this um, on the uh, on the overhead. Let's just push the machine out of the way. Bring in my little iron and ironing mat and switch that on. Bring in my, oops, my 12 by 12 mat. There we go. Now I know you can't see anything, so you just trust me. Just trust me that I'm doing my ironing. <laughs> Gosh, I was thinking about that the other day. I've um, I treated myself to some new clothes and um, they all need a really good press, you know. And even hanging them up in the shower will not get these creases out. So a little bit of best press. <sighs> And actually, I'll tell you what would be this would benefit from, and that's a starch. So if you've got a starch, oh, this is the one I use, this one. Um, it really would benefit from that because it would hold its shape beautifully. So let's have a look. That should be hot enough. So I'm going to press it as is. Uh, I wonder if I can... I can't move the I can't move the um, the camera. Let me do this on the overhead, and then you can see. Just the same. There we go. So um, <clears throat> I don't know. I've got a load. Of, look, can you see? I've got a load of black here from somewhere. Can you see that? I have absolutely no idea where that's come from. It looks like a sharpie pen. It wasn't there before, I swear. Um, OK, so I'm now just going to run it over the seams. But I'm just this is this is cotton, so it should be fine. But be aware if you've used lace just to keep your eye on it. Now I'm, go I'm going a bit gung ho. There's a reason for that. I just want to give it an initial. What I'm doing is just making sure this is crease free. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around the whole thing and I'm going to press all of these seams like this, okay? And you might want to, um, one, make sure your iron is clean. Mine, I need a new iron because mine is now really beyond the best. Um, don't press, so I'm pressed the second seam there, but I haven't gone anywhere near the first one. So when I push that out, do you see how square that is? If we compare it to this side that I haven't done yet, it's curved. Can you see that? So let's just push that seam out. Don't worry about going right up to the end. Just to make sure you do the, the majority of this, that seam. And then just be careful that you don't undo your good work and go over what you've just ironed. Be careful of your lace in case you don't, you don't want to melt it. It's the last thing. Gosh, all that work. So now, can you see the difference now? It squared it off, whereas before it was rounded. So um, there we are. It's done. In fact, well, I haven't done this bit. So same again. Let's do that. So just put that crease in, especially if you've used best press. And fold that over. Don't go over the line that you've just done. Try to avoid it. And there we go. There we go. So that's, look, you can see how well that squared that off. Um, yes, it's made a huge difference. There we go. So that is the ivy. Is it the ivy? Because that's, you know, we'd go for a cup of tea there, wouldn't we? Let's just go down a bit. Um, <laughs> that's our second ivy. So can you see now it's nice and square? It's made quite a difference, hasn't it? Um, and then, of course, the, we've got two now in that gorgeous fabric. And then these can go in there. I can, in fact, I could put half and half, couldn't I? There we go. So can you see? Let's hold it nicely. Pretty, pretty, very nice indeed. Lovely pattern, Kath. Lovely to demonstrate. Really nice and easy. I hope you enjoy making them as well. I hope, we, I hope I see one or two on the Making It Monday page. That would be really nice. Um, I've seen lots of makes. I'll tell you what I've seen lots of. I've seen lots of carries. 
So they've been very popular. Um, there was, um, we've seen quite a few of Aunt Sally's as well. So from last week, we've seen quite a few of those. So well done to anybody that's that's had a go, had a little had a little stitch up. But there we are. We've got two lovely ivies now, ready for the picnic table. Well, if you've seen my gold pattern for June, you'll know that I've made a table cover. It's actually a quilt, but let's call it a table cover. And it's in these fabrics and it's gorgeous. So I'm just adding to my picnic collection. I'm not necessarily going to put anything on the table cover because it's white. So I might put everybody on a grotty old picnic table over there and I just have that one to look at with just one or two select bits on like these. <laughs> and my lovely Aunt Sally's. Oh dear me. Right, there we are. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I didn't catch many of your comments, um, but it's always lovely to have your company. There's been uh, what, about 280 of us with uh, YouTube as well, which is always great. Don't forget this um, Facebook Live will always be available on Lizzie Curtis. It will also be on YouTube and I also share it to the Making It Monday group. So um, put a clear plastic, t um, plastic over the table. Darcy, I may well do that. <laughs> or nobody uses it anyway. So <laughs> whatever the case. Um, yes, so thank you for that. Um, so don't forget next week and the week after it'll be our Catherine that's going to be demonstrating. Thank you very much. Kath gives me a couple of Mondays off and uh, she's going to be bringing you more in the um, Tea Party series for June. Uh, we've got some great projects lined up for you. And also, if you bought the digital pass, if any of you bought the digital pass, don't forget all of those patterns for June will be emailed to you every Monday. I can't tell you what time. It'll be in the morning and it will depend on my internet connection, but you will get them emailed to you every Monday, every time they're just before they're launched. You'll get them about the same time as the, the gold members. So if you bought a digital pass, thank you very much. Um, and don't forget, you will get all of the patterns for June. Um, there'll be five because I'm going to give you a bonus and um all for the fantastic value of what is it three pounds i'm pretty sure it's three pounds i forget i forget because i'm busy all the time ah busy so <laughs> it's great it's a great deal if you don't know what i'm talking about head over to the making it monday section of my website and just read the blurb about it um, but it is very good value um, i think you'll enjoy it and especially because all the projects are going to be tea party projects which is really nice and useful thank you very much for your company i shall see you all again